So, Pete, I would like to start giving you this <laughs> and uh, asking you what does the slug model represent for you? Oh, okay, Daniel. Well, this is a summary diagram that we put together to sort of summarize our observations. What we uh, first noticed when, uh, when we were uh, studying our seismic sections, you could identify these uh, uh, regional unconformities. And, uh, and so that you can see the regional unconformity, the basic unconformity that uh, is, is above the basal blue unit. And then on top of that, we typically see uh, uh, onlap in a basinward uh, direction. And, uh, and then eventually, the onlap would continue, but, the, uh, but in the early part of the onlap, the units would thin basinward and pinch out. But as you get into the upper part of the onlap, the units would uh, become parallel and prograde out into the basin and downlap onto the, to the lower uh, units that were pinching out. And so, uh, and uh, since there was down on that, uh, we called that a downlap surface. And uh, we were able to identify these in the wells and outcrop, and we discovered these are really condensed sections. They're often very rich in fossils uh, and organic matter, and uh, so uh, they were uh, the zone of very slow uh, deposition. And then, uh, as we worked out into the into the into the basin more, we identified. Uh, in fact, this was in the uh, in the in the off in, in in offshore England, in the in the North Sea. We could identify these uh, these large mounds that you see there in red in the base, and uh, uh, and these mounds typically had uh, had uh, the thin uh, downlapping units draped over the top or a downlap over the top. And, uh, uh, and so you could tell from the clinoforms that they were, they were deep water deposits. And so uh, when uh, I first noticed these in the North Sea, uh, since uh, we had some evidence that these were sands, I, I thought, well, maybe these were turbidites. And, uh, uh, and I was thinking of their turbidites because they're deep water sands. And, uh, and, uh, and we had a project at Exxon. Well, we pushed real hard to, so some of these, uh, these mounds really made little, little low structures, little hives on the, on the basin floor. And, uh, and so we thought these would be prospects. And, uh, and we made a big effort to, uh, to, to get the company interested in it. And so we invited uh, people from the, from the North Sea Exploration Group to come over and we had the head geophysicist over there with us and he worked with us for a long time and uh, uh, working on these uh, these mounds and then he sent and he went back he sent one of his uh, his geophysicists over interpreters and uh, and to work with us to map these mounds in the North Sea so uh, so he he set out to uh, map these and he made these maps of these these mounds and he uh, and he found the largest mound, and he and he called that the I forget the name of the prospect, but it had something to do with the size of the mound, and uh, and so uh, so eventually they decided to they drill it. The, the the surface waters were was the shelf, and then you went through the shelf sediments down into the into the deeper water uh, sediments, and so they. They set up to drill the well, and they drilled the well, and and uh, and the, so the question was, uh, what were they? So they got through the well, and they hit, and they hit sand, and uh, I got a cable then from the, the Norwegian uh, geologists there that were were involved with this, and, uh, and they said, oh, you're all wrong. It's a delta, and, uh, and I said, why is it a delta? Because it has. Uh, uh, a certain type of, uh, of fossil in it. 
and uh, and uh, I wish I, re wish I remembered the name of that fossil, and uh, and uh, so I went to Jan Hardenbol, our, our paleontologist, and told him about this uh, this fossil. And he says, "Well, you know, uh, we've been studying these these fossils, and we found there are two varieties. There's a deep water variety and a shallow water. The shallow water is associated with the." Uh, lagoonal sediments and that type of thing. And that's typically what people think they are, but there is this deep water variety. And so he told me to see if they had sent some over and they'd look at them. So they sent some over and sure enough, they're deep water variety. So I, I felt vindicated. And, uh, and that, uh, and that uh, sand eventually developed into a, a billion barrel oil field. We wanted to we wanted to show that there were two types of units that pinched out, that like this one in the pink, and this one up here in sort of olive color, and uh, and we found these ones that pinch out uh, on the shelf edge. Uh, we called those low stand uh, wedges because they pinched pinched out at the shelf edge and were were all deposited seaward of the shelf edge. And then we found other ones that it extended farther uh, farther uh, landward up onto the shelf before they pinched out and uh, and, uh, and then we'd have the high stand come over the top of that and we called those shelf margin wedges because they they were extended over the over the shelf and we found these two types of uh, and then we identified two types of sequences we had the I guess the type one sequence where we had the low stands and the type 2 sequences where we had the shelf margin wedges. And, uh